Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name. Worship to your name. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, Elion. Thank you, Mekadesh. We praise you. We honor you. We adore you. I ask that you breathe upon this word this morning and let not one person live here the same. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap of hand as you take your seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everyone in the overflow shout the Lord and say amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of, of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. We move to Luke chapter 4. And in verse 18. Luke chapter 4. And in verse 18, he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. The subject this morning is the anointing of the master. The anointing of the master. That is our master, Jesus Christ. Our objective this morning is to understand what the anointing on the master is designed to achieve. What was the anointing on the master designed to achieve? Do we need interpretation? Are we good? It is important to know that we have a master who is not just Lord but the anointed one. The Bible calls him Jesus Christ. Christ is not a title. Christ is a mantle. It means the word Christ is the anointed one with his anointing. So when we say Jesus Christ, we're actually saying Jesus, the anointed one with his anointing. And he said that also in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 scripture said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So he came to the earth with an anointing that was designed to fulfill some purpose. And I prophesy to someone here this morning, the anointing of the master shall fulfill his purpose in your life today. Not just people that are here seated live, but people that are watching everywhere from around the world, that anointing will do something on your life this Saturday morning. If I can hear a believer's amen, shout it louder. Amen. What is the anointing designed to achieve, number one? Good tidings to the humble. He has anointed me to preach good tidings. I'm from, from the Isaiah version. Good tidings to the humble. That is those who will humble themselves. 
You remember the Bible said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. The good news is, it doesn't matter how terrible your life has been. It doesn't matter how wicked you have lived. It doesn't matter the extent of your iniquity. It doesn't matter the, the record behind your life. If only you will humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I am wrong. Then the good news is you can be forgiven. Then the good news is your past can be deleted. Then the good news is God will look at you as if you never did anything before. I remember while we were in the university. No, I was a, a, a young medical doctor already. What light is that? It's a distraction. Don't snap. We are not in the cinema. You don't snap while I'm preaching. I was in the university. I mean, uh, a medical doctor already. Young lady came in. This young lady had committed about 11 to 12 abortions. Abortion committed to a point where her womb had no opening anymore. It was healed together. Endometra Sinike. Abortions to the point where menstrual cycle was affected. And this young lady also had an ectopic pregnancy in one of her pregnancies that, and they cut off the left fallopian tube and the ovary um, and, uh, and the left fallopian tube on that side. And then she had a kidney problem on the other side. Then she had pelvic inflammatory disease. It florid discharge. Everything was wrong with her life. Everything was wrong. I was a young medical doctor in gynecology outpatient when she came. And then after I finished speaking with her, I told her, I said, look at how you have destroyed your life in a hurry by your lifestyle. She wept and wept. But I said, Jesus can make a difference in your life. Would you like to give your life to Christ? And she said, yes. And she gave her life to Christ at that time. Years later, I came back to the university to preach. Was a pastor already. And then, she ran to me. And she said, she actually meant business. She has given her life to Christ. And she's with the fellowship of Christian students on the campus. I told her, congratulations. Many, many years later, I was finishing a night vigil in Abuja, a Rwandan church. And I was shaking hands with the new, welcoming newcomers. And one person stepped out from the newcomers to, 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 to me. And he said, do you remember me? And I looked at her. And um, she said, do you remember me? And then I said, yes, I can remember you now. What has happened to you? He said, thank you for preaching to me. I got saved, got changed, joined the fellowship. I have finished my university now. I am in the law school in Abuja here now. She read law. She's in the law school. She said, I am married now and I also have a son now. Hey! 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 Are you just sitting and looking like that? I, we had already shared the grace and I told everybody, everybody, wait, 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 don't go yet. If this woman can be pregnant and give birth to a child, anybody can Anybody can be pregnant because I know her condition. I know her situation. Everything in her makes pregnancy impossible. But if she can be married and give birth to a child, then God can change anybody's life. I am here to announce to somebody, I don't care how your past has been. I don't care what the devil has damaged in your history. Jehovah God is changing your life today. If you can humble yourself and say, Lord, I am sorry. How I have lived my life. Change is coming your way. You believe that shout the Lord and say, Amen. Tell somebody around you, tell them God is changing your history. He's giving you a good future. Tell somebody, say your history will never be able to temper and destroy and disrupt your destiny in Jesus' name. Give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. Hallelujah. So, what is the anointing of the master directed to us? Good tidings to the humble. Number two is relief to the poor. 
He calls it the gospel to the poor. Relief to the poor. That is deliverance from empty handedness, from poverty, from wretchedness. Good news to the poor. The gospel to the poor. Am I communicating at all? So God is not just interested in your soul making heaven. He's interested in your welfare on the earth. He's not just interested in you, okay, uh, no more sin and just die. When you die, you go to heaven. No, no, no. He's interested in how you live in this world. So there is the gospel to the poor. There is relief to the poor. That em empty handedness is not your portion in God. That poverty, wretchedness is not your portion in God. In Revelation chapter 5 and in verse 12, he says, What is the lamb that was slain to receive power and then receive riches? You see, he was slain. One of the reasons why he was killed was to receive power and to receive riches and to receive wisdom and to receive honor and to receive glory and to receive blessing. I wonder why you're not showing the scripture. You want me to quote it from my head? Hallelujah. And strength. So there is, there is, there is relief to the poor. Everyone here this morning that has been a victim of wretchedness, empty handedness, labor without reward. Everyone here that is, has been a victim of near success syndrome and rising and crashing. By the anointing of the master, that yoke breaks this morning. That yoke is broken this morning. That yoke is dismantled this morning. If you are a believer, shout the Lord and say amen. Number three, please take your seat, is the mending of the broken heart or mending the broken hearted. Good tidings to the humble, relief to the poor, mending the broken hearted. That's what the scripture said, he would, to bind up the broken hearted. Mending the broken hearted, what does that mean? Those that are wounded at heart. There are many in this world today that are wounded at heart. There are many in this world today that are emotionally traumatized. They don't have a physical pain. They have a mental pain. They have a psychological pain. They have an emotional trauma. Am I communicating? There are maybe, and, and I can tell you the majority of human beings are in that category. Maybe it's just, imagine somebody who was rejected as a child. That is, from childhood, your father said, I don't need you. From childhood, your mother walked away from you. And then you grew up with pain of heart. The pain of rejection. There are those who have done everything possible. And yet they are suffering emotional trauma. From being jilted by a man. People you trust. Betraying and abusing your trust. Conspiracy. Am I communicating at all? That's the worst form of challenge among human beings conspiracy rejection betrayal disappointment people promise you heaven and earth people you raise try to erase you people you help turn back to hurt you am i communicating at all and there are those in that category and this category of situation can lead, lead to physical sickness there are people with hypertension. There are people with also cancer. I remember years ago, my wife and I met a woman. And this woman was suffering from a cancer. And before I could pray for her, the Lord said, we should speak to her to, to forgive. And I said, God said you should forgive. And she said she, she wouldn't be able to forgive. Now, she was, she, the problem was with her husband. The husband she married, they grew up together. They had nothing. They were all poor. Grew up together. Built their house together. Duplex. Built, I mean, got money together. And then when they became very big, the man kicked her out and brought, brought in out, kicked her out and brought in another girl to inherit the labor of this woman. And the woman was so pained. Why should the husband of my youth do this to me? And in that pain, cancer came. And she tried to forgive and she, she said she, she wouldn't be able to forgive him. She said the pain is too much. And the end wasn't good. But I don't know who is here today. Human beings gave you pain. Human beings injured your mind and your psychology. 
Jesus is here to heal you. I decree today, every emotional injury, every psychological injury, every psychological pain that you are suffering here today, the pain of rejection, the pain of, of betrayal, the pain of deception, the pain of rejection, I declare it is cleaned out today by the anointing of the master. In the name of Jesus, if you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. amen. Lift your hands and say, I receive my healing. From every pain in my mind, I receive my wholeness now. In Jesus' precious name, give the Lord a praise. I should take your seat. I have seen the connection between bitterness and insanity. I've seen it many times. People get so bitter. Young lady, I think she was in the... Just... Somewhere in Kenya, I read it in T.L. Osborne's book. Found herself raped by some terrible de demonic human agents. Outcome of that was that she became so bitter against men and against those particular people. And that made her to lose her mind. You will never lose your mind. In the name of Jesus Christ. Binding or mending the broken hearted. That is number four. Or number three. Betrayed, deceived, jilted, lied against, conspired against. Your healing is here in Jesus' name. Number four is liberty for the captives. Liberty for the captives. Captives are people that are captured. Captured. Captives. Enemy trapped you and caught you. I don't know what the captivity is all about. Maybe it is the captivity of addictions. The captivity of singleness. The captivity of barrenness. Whatever it is, that is a chain. The enemy has chained you. It is broken in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number five is opening up the prison to them that are bound. There are people that are in bondage in prisons. I don't know why the Bible separated the two. Liberty for the captives, opening up prisons. But I think that somebody can be in a prison when, when the, the, the law is violated. And that happens in the realm of the spirit too. When the devil, for example, enter agreement with families and then the people are not following the terms of the agreement and they don't know what their forefathers did with the devil i remember a young man who said that his father was a native doctor great grandfather was a native doctor grandfather was a native doctor and then one of his children were meant they were meant to become a native doctor was meant to become a native doctor and none of them agreed so nobody could cross secondary school all of them were at the same level that is prison the devil he was trying to quote law for them. I agreed with your forefather that you people should be like this. Why do you? And that you invested and graduated. Any in prison announced today. Rich. The greatest asset of destiny is direction. And until you know what to do, you don't live where you are. There are many people who are tied down to where they are because they don't know what to do. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I came to show you direction. I came to show you what to do. I came to show you the steps to take. I came to show you the moves to make. 
I came to show you, oh, direction is an asset of destiny. One wrong marriage can, be, can, can become the reason for the lifetime of frustration. Supposing I was not correctly married. Maybe you wouldn't know me. Am I communicating at all? Supposing I found myself in America struggling as the professor of surgery or anything because I think everybody is going to America. That's where money or whatever is. And I didn't understand that I am called to deliver a generation of people. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because there are people who think that every open door is a door. And there are some open doors that are traps. That is why the eyes of the blind must be open. That is why you must know what God wants you to do with your life. Who to marry. Where to live. What work to do. Where to direct your energy. Where to direct your talent. I prophesy today in the name of Jesus. Everyone here that is a victim of spiritual blindness. Your eyes are opening right now. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. Your eyes are opening right now. Your eyes are opening right now. Your eyes are opening right now. Any area where you need direction, where you need light, I declare the light is released. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big clap as you take your seat. Number seven is said to set at liberty those that are bruised. So I call it healing the afflicted. To set at liberty those that are bruised. The meaning of that is healing the afflicted. Those that are bruised, those that are injured, those whose, whose systems need restoration. To set them at liberty. Healing the afflicted. Afflicted with a liver affliction, bruised. Afflicted with a heart affliction. Afflicted with a lung affliction. Afflicted with a, with, with, with a sickle cell affliction. Whatever it is. The anointing of the master. You said that in Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Everyone who is in need of bodily healing this morning. That healing is happening to you. In fact, everybody who is in need of a physical spare part this morning, the, the spare part is being released to you. It's 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 being released to you. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. Lift your right and say, I receive the healing ministry of the master by his anointing. I receive it now. Give the Lord a praise and, and you take your seat. Number eight is the release of favor for the needy. The release of favor for the needy. Because it's the acceptable year of the Lord. That is the anointing of the master causes him to release favor and acceptability on those who need it. The grace of God is nothing but unmerited favor. Am I communicating at all? That is, in case your, your, your life needs favor. In case, like I said earlier on, you are a victim of rejection. The anointing the, ma the, the master carried gives acceptance in the place of rejection. It's like what happened to David by the anointing of Saul, or of Samuel, who brought him out and anointed him in the midst of his brethren when the enemy had planned his rejection. Rejection shall not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Number, number nine is the administration of vengeance. And judgment to the deserving. He said, 
and to proclaim the year of vengeance of our God. That was the Isaiah version of chapter 61, verse 2. The year of vengeance of our God. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Jesus the master also has the anointing to release vengeance. That is for those who will not let us rest. Everyone who stands in the way of the purpose of God for your life. In this season, they shall be laid to rest. Everyone who say you should not rest. We should not rest. They will never find rest. They and their generation. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. One man testified about three or four Sundays ago in church. How there is a notable wizard in their family. I think they said they were 11. He killed everybody until they became three. He just kept killing people. And in fact, the people have to beg the man. Anything they want, to just, they just beg him. That happened until this man joined our commission. Then he acquired the fire to deal with the devil. One day, the man said to him, where have you gone? I saw that your wicked pastor in the dream carrying cane and whipping me. Fayoko. Yes, the anointing is very wicked against the devil. You remember Jesus carried whip at one time and whipped, whipped those buying and selling in the temple. And the man woke up paralyzed. And you know what he said? You know the devil is very daring. He said he will see between him and the pastor who will die first. When the man said that I stepped up and immediately I said, did he say that? Then it cannot last more than three days. They say, no, it has already happened. Because on the third day, from when he said it, yes, the man went to the altar to present my picture of present me before his altar. To say whatever. Then thunder hit him there. He was roasted beyond recognition. Burnt like charcoal. I am here with the same mantle and the same vengeance mantle. Every man, woman, boy, girl, witch, wizard. Agent of the devil that will not let you rest. You will not let your family rest. Will not let anyone connected, related, or share with us rest. Today, they shall be roasted by fire. They shall be laid to rest. If you are saying amen, say louder, amen. Under 72 hours, you will hear stories of vengeance. Stories of judgment. Stories of the administration of the judgment of God. Did you see what the Bible said there in Isaiah 61? When the day of the vengeance of our God is released, the outcome is comfort for those who mourn. And, then, and, when you, and when you go and when you go to verse 3 now, all of it becomes joy now. All that morning Zion to give them beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, you know. But before all that will happen, judgment and vengeance must happen. So there are, there are people whose living frustrates your joy. 
There are people until God deals with them, they continue to temper with your joy. Everyone tempering with your joy. Tempering with your peace. The joy and the peace of your life and of your family and of your community. I decree today they shall experience vengeance. They shall experience judgment. You believe that shall the loudest amen. What is the tenth point? It is what I have just said. Joy. Gladness in the place of sorrow. That is the tenth assignment of the oil on the master. Gladness in the place of sorrow. Gladness in the place of mourning. Beauty in the place of ashes. You won't mourn again. Your family will mourn again. Your church will never mourn again. Every premature grave dug for anyone in your family, in your community, those who dug the grave shall be buried inside. Every coffin prepared for you and your family and your loved ones, that coffin is set on fire. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. Every death verdict on, on you, on your children, on your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your friends, your loved ones. Every verdict of death that is issued against you. Today, the verdict is cancelled. And any list where they have placed your name for judgment and destruction. That list is set on fire. Somebody say loud amen. Somebody say the loudest amen. Are you ready to receive the ministry of the master? Take your seat one minute. I'm not sure that I've preached this message in this order before today. What do you do to access the anointing of the master? Number one, recognize and realize the ability of the master. Recognize, realize. Realize what Jesus carries. He's our savior from sin, but he came to do for us more than that. It is not only sin he came to save us from. He came to cause us to live quality lives in the earth. Your revelation determines your manifestations. Your revelations determine your results. Your revelations determine your realities. What you see out of scripture is, determine, is what determines what you can see out of the world. I like you to see the things we have said. As the capability of the master. Number two, receive his ministry to your life. And we receive by faith. Receive his ministry. 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 And number three. Maintain a quality relationship with the Savior. With the Master. Quality relationship. Don't be a churchgoer by mouth. Let every devil know that you know God. Let every witch know that you are serving God. I remember in the university in those days, some of our colleagues you know, go on into the ward rounds to preach, or into the wards to preach. And I heard that some, of, some, some group went to the psychiatry ward to preach. That is the ward of mad people. And one madman person saw one of the sisters and said, ah, other people are coming here, you are coming too. Other people are coming here, you are coming too. That is, I know you, you are not a serious Christian. I know your life. 
other people are coming, you are coming too. That was how the sins are reversed. The devil said, Jesus, I know Paul, I know, but who are you? To the seven sons of Sceva. You must come to the point where the devil knows you as real, as genuine, as authentic. Where the devil knows you as a child of God. Quality relationship with God. Where the prince of this world can come but find nothing in you. When you are at such a level, the anointing of the master, you don't need to beg him for it. It, it is yours even before they ask him. Lift up your right hand everywhere you are and just give him the praise. Give him the honor.